Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Tectonica, which has just received a huge base building update, adding in floors, walls, and decorations, new story elements, quality of life features, and an overhauled tech tree. So this is an amazing time to jump into the game and check it out. Plus, it's on sale right now, so click on the first link in the description and pick up Tectonica today. Also, thank you Firehose Games for sponsoring this video. So we're back in the factory where last time we automated all that we could. And to unlock new tech, we needed data cores. Those guys over there. And you have to feed these terminals in order to unlock the actual tech branches. So they just add this new one called X-Ray that's way up here. And I am still down here with most stuff. And wow, has most stuff changed? Which is fine, because we're gonna be practically resetting as well. We're gonna rip up the entirety of the factory and rebuild it now that we have all the cool base building stuff. Like this all, it works, it's fine, it's nice, but it could be so much better. So goodbye everything, goodbye this, that, the whole nine yards, and we'll just throw it all into a box, probably over by the waterfall there. And then we can rebuild it with all the new base building tools. And a little spoiler, but we're gonna go a little crazy with the building. And so in one big boop, it's like we're starting fresh. Except we don't have to worry about power, and we still have a lot of our mining operation underway. Oh, and we have a million items to use to build our brand new base. But we don't have any of the stuff for base building. Like, we don't have anything unlocked yet. I don't even see it to be unlocked yet. I think we might have to go to this x-ray thing. So we will probably do that. And for the last couple hours, this has been beeping at me, so fine. Signal triangulated. What is it? New location added to HUD. New location? Cartilage. Cartilage. That doesn't sound like an x-ray. But the symbol says PX, so that has to be x-ray, right? Yeah. And here we go. Now we're in the big main cave. I remember having to put an auto shield field up around those cauldron giant plants to keep them from getting chopped down. Oh. We realized early on that natural sources of light were worth keeping around. Whoops. Plenty of room to build factories by cutting into walls. You don't always need to kill the view. Well, got some news. Base building update means we will. And I've preemptively done a little bit of that uh, view killing. Uh, because all of our science is going to be moved over here. How this game works is you build these science platforms and then it stacks these science spheres upwards. And this cave is pretty tall. Looking amazing, actually. They added like fog in. I love it. And anyway, yeah. So now, all the science is going to be dealt with here. Oh, wait, but I don't have a little arm inserter to put it into the actual platforms. No, we have to go back. All right. So science is back on the table. And once this all fills up, we can start re-unlocking everything. But also, where, where are we supposed to go? PX. It's up there? Yeah, let's go up there and check it out first. But it looks like there's a cave that kind of goes in that direction. So if we dig here... Whoa. We're pretty much good to go, bot. There we go. Oh. Oh, this is the new beast building stuff. So we scan it. And then do we have to, like, unlock the tech? Sports 4 in the tech tree. Where in the tech tree? Wall lights, ooh. Overhead lights, ooh. We have to scan all of that. Oh, and this is a, wait, this is a whole tab. A construction tab. Oh, okay, so there's some stuff to scan. Is there other stuff we can just build? Like, could we just go in our inventory and build stuff now? Uh, not necessarily. We have the floors and the basics. It looks like we may need some tech. Fair enough, more to scan for me. Though once we scan something, it disappears, so gotta be a little careful. No protection zones out here with these ruined facilities, Breaker. You can scan everything, you can take everything. Just my way about it. And just more loot down here. Is that sciencey stuff? Old sciencey stuff. Which means it's my sciencey stuff. And we'll just take a little staircase on the way back, why don't we? And back to, ah, X-Ray. God, this game is so beautiful. Excellent work, Groundbreaker. Welcome to Production Terminal X-Ray. 
It troubles me that you were forced to rebuild so much of the sector without the structural advantages of Calisite. Tell me about but it. Perhaps all good things come in time. Calisite. The synthetic cement we managed to make here. I remember it. Facilities built from pieces of the Excalibur form the core of our needs, but we underestimated how much Calix had to offer. With Calisite, we were able to expand our operations indefinitely. It was like magic. Tough against the elements, conducts electricity. If we'd been able to figure out how to make it work with our protection zones, it would have replaced everything. That was a genuine loss. As you know, the protection zones are a key strategic tool in our arsenal. Of course, sir. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, these are monorail depots. Ah. So yeah, you get trains in this game, or monorails. Same diff, right? These service required. What would you like? Oh, some real basic stuff, like just some ingots and some twigs? This terminal won't give us new tech until we make some initial repairs to it, Breaker. If you don't recognize anything it seems to be asking for, you might have to come back later. Before you decide either way, though, you might as well scan those training terminals right next to X-Ray. They'll probably give you some good information on what to do here and how to do it. Sure. What did that do? Oh, it's a ground breaker's guide thing. Oh, okay, so like lore stuff. Very important to read. This will allow us to get steel ingots and cement pretty quick in the construction tree. There are blast drills and blast smelters that use mining charges to do stuff. Then yeah, bunch of tech stuff we will probably get to later. Right now, we're just gonna grab like the kindle vine stems and the ingots and stuff and reactivate this terminal so we can get building supplies and then rebuild our starter factory. And we're back. So let's service the terminal. Here is the things and the stuff. Repair. <laughs> Tier unlocked. You've got a whole new tech tree to look at now, Breaker. And to start making these new structural components, you'll need two things. Steel ingots and cement. Oh boy. The easiest way to make steel ingots is to smelt iron ingots. And okay. the easiest way to make cement is to smelt limestone into quicklime and then handcraft it or use an assembler to make the final product. Finally, don't forget that steel production and cement are technologies on their own, so you'll need research cores to activate them in the tech tree before you can make any of this stuff. Gotcha. Well, first off, I'm seeing the terminal here. We could just throw a couple of those in, and step one's done. Now we just need the steel and cement. But do we have enough cores to actually get any science? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking we might. All right, so what is in construction now? Nothing. Oh, but here we go. So in construction, I was looking in Victor and Lima has nothing, but when you go to X-Ray, it scrolls like way, 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 way up. And look at all this stuff we have now. Huge supports, platforms, walls, stairs and walkways. Oh, thank goodness, walkways. The walkways need steel, that's fine. Because we can make catwalks, metal stairs, railings. Oh, this is going to be such a cool factory soon. Oh, but we need to scan stuff. Ugh. But for now, we're back at base, and we got to get some steel schmelting. Let's do something temporary, just so we can get the ball rolling on things. We're just going to have iron go into the smelters, and then go out into a different box. Now, steel? Yes? No. Oh, because we need the technology. Let's get some steel. Let's get quick lime, which takes a ton of limestone, and then cements right there. But steel's online now, and after smelting the limestone into quick lime and assembling it into concrete, we'll soon be able to upgrade X-Ray. Upgrade? I hope your assembly line for explosives is on point breaker. It because is you not. now have access to blast drills. Blast drills? Blast drills use mining charges instead of fuel. And instead oh. of producing ore when you point them at a vein, they produce chunks. Chunk? And they'll do even more in the future, so start getting your blast drill situation in order. Okay. Uh, let's quickly just see the tech on that. So we have Deco Series 1. Ooh, beams. Very cool. What about up in here now? Reinforced stuff? Sure. 
And then the blast drills themselves. Interesting. So you make the blast drill, and you kind of, I guess, will make the chunks. Make the chunks into powder and then into ingots? Maybe it's more efficient than how we currently go about things. It probably is, right? Uh, right now, though, that is a little bit far ahead. Task inbound. Metal powders. Required for production of steel slabs. No. <laughs> no. We're going exploring. It looks like there is a cave out this way. So we're going to go check that out and try and find out where these walkways are. We have to find and scan walkways in order to actually build them. And I can't get started rebuilding my factory if I don't have the stuff. Oh, the stuff. Now I can probably just get everything we need after an absolute scanning spree. This all goes to a box. Oh. With so much coming and going, transportation and storage hubs oriented around monorail systems were crucial. Oh. Maybe some good ideas here for how you could set up a few of your own. Oh. Looks like we hit the jackpot. If only there is a scanning speed upgrade, though. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there's all too much to this place. It's just a ton of stuff to scan and scoop to use in your own factories. Moving upstairs here. We got a bunch of boxes. But they just have limestone. I guess because all this stuff is so old. And after scooting around everywhere, we managed to get to the top floor. Yeah, you really want to scan everything, because some things you wouldn't think are an unlock, but oh, they are. But we got it all now. And that's the whole nine yards. But then even with all this steel stuff, it doesn't look like we can craft everything I want. Like, there's some walls that need, like, concrete bricks, and these railings need copper slabs. And I know to get to all that stuff, we're gonna have to mess around with the blast mining drill. And it's not like I have infinite mining charges either. So without the charges, we can't blast mine. And no blast mining means no chunks for building. But maybe we could get the blast furnace tech another way by fixing up Victor Terminal. And there we go. New technology is available. Eh, not really. It got us a couple of good things like extra bio density and whatnot. And also we can make Atlantum ingots, but didn't really necessarily advance us too much further. But because we could thresh this Atlantum ore and make it this Atlantum mixture, that got us tons of Atlantum ingots. And I know for sure we could use those to open up some abandoned stations. And I'm sure we can get some useful unlocks that way. So what secrets are in you, little door? Boop bop. We're good? Facility access what? door unavailable. Refer to display yes. panel for self-repair oh, requirements. Oh, press the repair button. Good idea. What do we have here? Chairs? I recognize this place. Oh? These were the living quarters for the crew. Okay. We might be able to salvage some personal upgrades here that people left kicking around. That sounds nice. Okay, all in. A bunch of lore stuff. Nobody remembers nothing. Those cubes were workers here, but they turned into cubes. No one knows why. We're trying to figure it out and find survivors. Loki not looking good. Tech-wise, though, we are looking great. Except, we still have not gotten the blast smelter unlocked. But you know what? While I was out scooting around, it looks like there is a base or something just below my entire main factory that I just haven't explored yet. So either I am blind, or this is some kind of new content stuff. Either way, it's pretty reasonable. What do we need to repair it? Atlantum and that stuff. 200 cooling systems? No, give them back! Well, sunk cost, may as well go in now. Is it better being worth it? Items are expensive now that we're back to handcrafting. This is some kind of medical facility. It was pretty rare that people got sick or hurt, but better safe than sorry. And we should be able to find a few upgrades in mint condition because of it. What the heck is that? Stack inserter? <gasps> oh. And what's that? Crank Generator Mark II. So more power for us? That's awesome. The stack inserters, though. Oh my goodness, we can use those. Uh, there's also a laptop over here. Lore. New databank entry about Lancet. I think that was the ship the humans used to get to this planet. Ooh. Box with advanced tech? Okay, actually, this must be a new building because all of this stuff I've never seen before. A bunch of these. Oh, and finally a technology. But it's not new stuff, it's just upgrades. 
But maybe this helmet is something new? Breaker, this facility has the tech we need to get you out of your suit. Oh. Maybe we can finally hear your voice and figure out who you are. Give me a second and I'll initiate the removal protocol. I never even thought about getting out of my suit. When a work suit is all that stands between you and being killed by pretty much everything, they make it a little more complicated than pulling on a zipper. Makes sense. Suit removal. Denied. Security clearance Sigma. Denied? We'll see about that. Colonel Paladin? I'm sorry, Sergeant. Sigma is not a security clearance I possess. Sir, how could that be possible? The only people who even outrank you are... The only people who outrank me are not your concern. The Groundbreaker does not seem to be in danger or in pain. They are not disabled or impaired in the ability to construct the machines to meet our objectives. True. We are in no position to dwell on it. You will drop this matter. Understood. Secret business stuff. Oh boy. Mr. Green Guy be hiding something. Maybe it's our freaking blast furnace tech. In the meantime, we'll just put down these new crankshafts. Get a little bit more power. Or maybe a lot of bit more power. Uh, maximum charge, 1200. Whereas version one can make 150? Wow, these new ones are a lot better. That is so much power. Holy macaroni, Batman. But it's not like power's a big issue. It's the blast furnaces, and we still don't have the tech after all of our exploring, so I guess we have to do the thing. We have to build the blast drills so we can get the chunks and then move on to the blast furnaces at X-Ray. Which also means we needed to build a temporary factory. And I wanted to avoid this. I tried my best to, but we had to. We can't just handcraft all of the stuff we need to make the buildables. We needed some kind of factory. So I put together the absolute essentials in this temporary spaghetti nightmare. And so we have re-automated the mining charges. And so we can unlock tech in the five seconds here. I have also automated the blue science and we are stacking up on that. Let's grab it, our extra charges, set the science up into a stack and then figure out these bad boys. Okay, so we need to give these the charges and it detonates all supplied mining charges per cycle. The big explosion, we get lit chunk. Then the cooldown is like how long? 12 seconds it says. And then we'll just set down a box for the outputs and a box for the inputs. But it's not so simple as to just build a belt of mining charges into there. Because this thing is too fast. First one goes in. Explosion. Very cool. But then we have two go in. Three go in. And then on the next cycle, they're all gone. And we only got one junk. So now we have to figure out how to feed this slowly. And yeah, if the cycle time is 12 seconds and the max speed of an inserter is 20 items per minute, I'm pretty sure you could do like a timing calculation to figure those things out. But we could also do something else maybe. Let's get rid of all that. And let's build a loop out this way. And from the loop, we will have a splitter there and then another splitter here. I don't know if this will work, but the idea is we'll get 20 items per minute out of this, right? Well, then half of them can go back to the box. So then there's 10 items per minute. And the 10 is split to five items per minute. And I'm just taking a guess here, but maybe that's slow enough to only feed this every 12 seconds. So, okay, let's try this out. Let's get the chunks out of here. Let's put 10 of the charges into the box here. If it all works out properly, this will get 10 mining charges, make 10 chunks, and then we're good to go. We can just slam down as many mining charges in here as we want, and we're fine. So the first one went off, we got our chunk. Next charge is coming in, cooldown's about to end. And that timing was literally perfect. <laughs> Did we just set it up perfectly first time? Wow, I am 99% sure we just did. And then after the last mining charge, the kablooey. 
we got the ore, and there we go. 10 copper chunks. It's perfect. Uh, this is not scientific at all, but it, it does work. So, hey, whatever. Let's just throw, like, half of our charges in there and get all the chunks we can. Now that we've kind of figured it out, we just have to scale it up. So now we have two blast drills. And we're just over at the first station, Lima, where we start the game. And these guys are just blasting into the cliff here, doing quite a bit of damage, but also getting me quite a bit of ore. And also, setup-wise, I've just really been winging it, and it's continued to work. So hey, we're all good. So we'll grab all of those chunks, all of our uh, copper ones, and then head back to base. Because now we still need one more thing. We need the concrete in order to unlock the x-ray stuff. And for concrete, we need cement, which we have plenty of, but then gravel. And gravel, how do we make that? By threshing the chunks. Can it be either chunk? Like, can we just do that? Goes into the machine takes forever, and then we get, okay, then we get some ore and gravel. Oh my gosh, oh my goodness, this is so good. This is amazingly good. This is way better than I could have possibly have hoped and dreamed. So, oh, we don't even really need the mining machines anymore. Like, just look at those production numbers. It's a 1 to 25 ratio, plus the byproduct? That's not exactly our objective still. We still want the concrete. So go, go, temporary setup. Let's filter out the gravel here. Send it off into a constructor over this way. And now, please, I hope this thing is fast. Oh, it is very fast. Great. Because the faster the machine, that means the less space we have to take up. And our temporary factory has taken up quite a bit of space here. And I'd prefer not to expand it. So we expanded the concrete area with a few extra machines. But that'll be the last thing for realsies. Because we'll get all the concrete we need. So hello X-Ray, it's been a while. Would you like some foo? A little bit of repair, a little upgrade? Boop, bop, boop. Upgrade. Did I mention how you need lots of explosives for those blast drills? Yes. Well... Now you need even more of them for your blast smelters. Fantastic. Blast smelters open up a lot of possibilities, but their main job is producing metallic slabs. And you won't be able to build blast smelters until you figure out ceramics. So activating oh. that on the tech tree should be your first priority. Heck, it's ceramics. Am I missing something here? Terraforming. We have basic refinement. Wait, refined iron chunks with silverthorn extract? That sounds really good. Better blasting? So we can get three chunks per blast if five mining charges are supplied. So if we get the ratios better, that works better. Uh, we get ceramics here, and that's out of clay, dirt, what? But uh, it's kind of ironic. I prepared all of that blue science, and it looks like we actually just need the basic science. Whoops. So we'll let that stack up for a while. And in the meantime, back in our original starter cave here, I think we could turn this into our blast melting array area. We have a lot of space. We're not using the area for anything else yet. And it's close to our main factory, which is just right over there. So let's grab a couple mining charges and start blasting towards our new blast furnace area. And it looks like we are through to where. Oh, <laughs> we took like right past where we wanted to go. Uh, that's great, actually, because now we can take out the rest of this cliff here, and right behind this cliff are our blast drills. So to get this party started, I first brought the power over to that area, widened our logistics tunnel, and then we got a ton of the normal science, and we can unlock all the new stuff. So we'll unlock the ceramics, and we make the ceramics by getting plant matter, turning that into dirt, and then turning the dirt into clay, then the clay into ceramic parts by smelting it. Then the ceramic parts into ceramic tiles. And once we have enough of them, we can make ourselves the blast smelters. And I have some big plans for them. But first, we've got to figure out how it all works. I'm sure we just put the explosives in <laughs> this little guy. I thought it would be 
a lot bigger. And then, what, the chunks? Detonates everything per cycle, yeah, we get it. So we'll just put two in there. Grab some chunks. And is this like immediate? That would be the dream. It's like immediately put this in here, 250 are dealt with. Wait, what? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I was freaking out there. Basic slabs, goodness gracious. If this wasn't how to do things, I don't know what we would have done. Now we put that in, get that out, and start blasting. So now for this factory, I actually want to set it up nicely. We have all the building materials, or at least we will soon. Let's leave ourselves a little bit of space, like a three tile gap to walk. And then maybe we can change this out for like, I don't know, concrete or something. And we'll keep the powered floors as like the normal factory floor. It'll just make life easier. And also for this system, we really want to actually figure out how to do things here. Winging it has worked. But I want a scalable system. Good thing is the numbers on these are all the same, like cycle time is 12 seconds, and the inserter is 20 per minute, so calculator time. The basic inserters do three items a second, and this has 12 seconds. The three seconds here from one arm can distribute to four of the blast smelters. Yeah, yeah, yes, oh my gosh, that's so much easier. Why didn't I just do the math before? Okay, and the only concern is distribution. We have to make sure everything goes out the proper way. And this configuration of splitters should support even item distribution. And back over to the blast drills. Yeah, these are one to one. So it's one drill per one furnace. So we'll have four blast smelters for the iron and then the same for the copper. Oh, and wait, did I say four drills and four furnaces? Nah, we kind of doubled that whole thing. Why not? We have the tech, it's pretty easy to set up now that we understand how to do so. And since everything is running pretty slowly as well, I calculated we only need like seven mining charges per minute to get it all running. Now, I gotta be honest, I was a little skeptical of the numbers, so instead of following them exactly, I decided to do a little something different and kind of go overboard with it. So instead, in here, we're gonna be making uh, 40? Yeah, about 40 mining charges. Those are pretty easy to make. All the materials we can literally just grow. So we grow like some of the vines and stuff, they get threshed up, then move through the system and eventually we have all this stuff and factory starts exploding, but in a good way. But will it all actually work? Well, we're about to find out. Cause there are a hundred ways this whole thing could go wrong. But stage one is looking good here and now we have the charges. Now we just have to wait for the blasting to start. Except I'm not hearing no earth shattering kaboom. Oh, I see what's probably happening. The mining charges are being distributed evenly. However, uh, I'm overflowing with the ingot things. What are they? The chunks. Okay, so if we just stuff the system with all of our other stuff, then this system should overflow nicely and get started properly. Yes, okay, good, 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 good. Probably just gonna take a minute. Well, with the copper system stuffed as pretty much it can be, this all should be running perfectly. But you can see here that this is not getting any charges, like at all. So let's go back to the mining charge area. Maybe we just need more charges? No, I don't think we do. We go check some other machines here. I think it's a distribution issue. Where, oh. No, we don't have any leftover charges. Wait, maybe it's not? Or maybe it is, because once that cooldown was done, we should have seen a new charge enter here. So at this point, I filled in the rest of the space to make as many mining charges as this system can. Maybe even too many. Like, I don't know if all these threshers and things can keep up with this amount of production. Almost well, certainly they can't. But no matter, everything will even out eventually. And in the meantime, we got tons of explosives and more importantly, tons of slabs, which we can turn into all the building materials we want and make this area look fantastic. So I'm gonna go on a decorating tirade with all of the new stuff that's available in the beast building update. Then I'll show you the results once I'm done. So after a few hours here, I have definitely gotten a handle on the building stuff and wow, we are able to build 
everything we could possibly want. Like thousands of items. We didn't need anything near this level of automation to get the decorative stuff online. And since we had so much, I went up a little crazy. I can't wait to show you. So you can see just the basics right now, but there are walkways everywhere with the railings. Everything is structurally supported, so it doesn't have just, you know, floating platforms everywhere like it used to be like. Then, these are nice concrete slabs that guide us around so I don't get lost or, you know, trip and fall in a landmine. And then over that way, I've transformed that cliffside into a control deck area. So we can go across the little river here. Has some flood walls just in case. Check out all of our machines down there. And then scoot into our facility. Which I've tried to blend in with the terrain to a decent amount. Like we can build full on things that are independent from the terrain. But I feel it looks a lot better when it's mixed together like this. Only thing is I really wish we found lights. Uh, unfortunately didn't find them anywhere so... Yeah, it's a little dark right now, but lights are available, and I did have some, and I used them to great effect. So now, though, we have this huge warehouse where we're going to congregate all of the items, like all the stuff from our blast furnaces. It's going to come up here later on, and then we can transport it to wherever else it needs to go. And there's a bridge over this way going to some limestone if we need it later, and there's a cool deck that looks over into the ravine here. Back. Let's just jump on in. I want to make a slight adjustment. There we go. A little bit more brutal. Also, I incorporated it with the story element piece that's just down here. So we actually start in this area, right? This is one of the first little places you go. And I think you find one of the main characters here. Now there's like a little walkway down. It looks like it's built in. Anyway, inside, just have some walkways around for now, at least in here. Mostly because we're probably gonna have to do some changes because things aren't exactly working, but we'll get to that later. After I show you guys one of the coolest features, which is our main logistics tunnel here. Because here I had a couple lights and were able to do something funky. I hid them behind all these felts, so it kind of has like an eerie vibe to it. And then up in the corners, I used stairs to make it look like supports. I thought it's turned out pretty dang well, especially with limited lights. Yeah, definitely beats flying over all of the spaghetti, that's for sure. And I know later on that we can set up a monorail through this whole place. And then there's a thing called a rail runner, which I'm pretty sure is like a hook to hook yourself onto the monorail and move you at super speeds to destinations. So later on, we'll be flying through tunnels like these and all of our items will too. But yep. For now, there's too many what-ifs, and the warehouse is empty. Right now, I am very pleased on how our first finished factory has turned out. Except for the blast furnace stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna have to load balance all of the inputs, I think. But I don't know, that's a future cubes problem. For now, that is gonna be all. But if this game looks up your alley, be sure to pick it up on Steam today by clicking on that first link in the description. And until next time, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye